Hello students. Today in this session we will be studying a poem from the Beehive book which is the textbook in English for class 9. The name of the poem is Rain on the Roof and its poet is Coates Kinney. Coates Kinney was an American lawyer, politician, journalist and a poet. Of all his verses, The Rain on the Roof was the most popular. This poem made Kinney famous. It is said that one night, while trying to see in his old college dormitory, Coates overheard the patter of the rain, and with memories flashing in his mind, he is said to have penned down this beautiful verse, "The Rain on the Roof." Now let us read the first stanza of this poem. When the humid shadows hover over all the starry sphere and the melancholy darkness gently weeps in rainy tears what a bliss to press the pillow of a cottage chamber bed and lie listening to the patter of the soft rain overhead. Let's now understand some difficult words of this stanza. Humid shadows are the dark clouds full of moisture. Hover means to remain suspended in the air. Starry spheres are the night sky full of stars. Bliss means great joy. In this opening stanza, the poet has created a picture of dark clouds suspended in the air. These dark clouds have totally covered the stars, resulting in complete darkness. Darkness here has a negative aspect of sadness. So when the poet is sad, in such a dark, gloomy, rainy night, the only relief or joy he gets is when he listens to the patter of the rain lying in his cozy bed with his head pressed against his pillow. So we can say that in this stanza the poet has very beautifully depicted his feelings while describing a rainy night. He says that when the human shadows that is the dark clouds full of moisture are overcast in the sky and cover all the stars in the sky a darkness appears. This darkness creates a sad and gloomy environment. It seems that the rain is falling like tears from the sky. In such a sad or melancholy mood, the only bliss or joy is to press your head on the pillow of your cottage bed and lie listening to the patter sound of the rain falling on the roof. Now let's read the second stanza of the poem. Every tinkle on the shingle has an echo in the heart and a thousand dreamy fancies into busy being start and a thousand recollections weave their air threads into woof as I listen to the patter of the rain upon the roof. Have a look at some difficult words then. Phrases of this stanza. Shingles are rectangular tiles used on soapy roofs. Dreamy fancies are imaginary stories. Recollections means memory. And the phrase weave their air threads into woof refers to the stories that are being woven together in the poet's dreams. Here woof refers to the threads woven across the loom. 
So, in this second stanza, the poet tells us that the rain brings back wonderful memories of his childhood. He then recollects those memories while he lies in the comfort of his cozy bed, listening to the steady patter of the rain. Children patter is the sound made by the rain when it falls. The poet says that every tinkle or ringing sound of the rain falling on the shingles of the roof echoes in his heart and creates fanciful dreams in his mind. He then recollects numerous memories of his past which come into his mind as dreams. He says that as he listens to the patter of the rain upon the roof, he weaves many new dreams in his heart along with the memories of his past. Now let us read the third stanza of this poem. Now in memory comes my mother, as she used in years gone, to regard the darling dreamers, her she left them till the dawn. Oh, I feel her fond look on me, as I list to this refrain, which is played upon the shingle by the patter of the rain. First, let's understand the difficult words of this stanza. Agon means the days gone by. Darling dreamers here refers to the poet and his siblings when they were lovingly put to sleep by their mother. Refrain is a part of a song that is repeated. In this third stanza, the poet introduces his mother. He says that he is remembering his mother who is no longer alive. He remembers how in the years gone by, she used to come to check on her darling dreamers, he and his siblings, as they were asleep having pleasant dreams. The poet can feel his mother fondly looking at him as he listens to the song or the rhythmic pattern of the raindrops falling on the shingles of his roof. Whenever he hears this sound, it brings back memories of the past and he is reminded of his mother. The sound of the rain correlates his past memories with his present. So children, we see that through this verse, the poet talks about the varied reactions to the sound of raindrops falling on the roof of his house. He also enlightens us with the sweet memories of his mother and his childhood. And finally, we can say that through this poem, the poet Coat Skinny expresses his love for nature and praises the healing power of rain. Now let's have a look at the rhyming scheme and some poetic devices used in this poem. The rhyming scheme of the poem is A B C B D E F E. Let's now study the various poetic devices. We can see a number of examples of the poetic device alliteration in this poem. Alliteration is a figure of speech in which the same sound is repeated in a group of words. We can say that alliteration is a repetition of sound. And the words don't have to be right next to each other. The various examples of alliteration in this poem are Humid hover Here the H sound is repeated Starry spheres Here we have the repetition of the S sound Press pillow 
the P sound is repeated. Lie listening. Repetition of the L sound. Rain roof. R sound is repeated. Memory, my mother. The M sound is repeated. Darling dreamers. Repetition of the D sound. All these are examples of alliteration. Onomatopoeia is another poetic device used in this poem. Onomatopoeia are also called as sound words. It is the use of meaningful sound effects in poetry to make the description more expressive and interesting. Patter in this poem is a sound word. It is the sound made by the raindrops falling on the roof. Personification is yet another figure of speech used in this poem. Personification is a literary device that gives human-like characteristics to non-human entities. Example of personification in this poem can be seen in the first stanza when the poet talks about melancholy darkness. Here darkness has been personified as the poet says that darkness is sad. The next example of personification can be seen in the second stanza when the poet talks about a thousand recollections weave. Here recollection that is memories is personified when the poet says that they weave dreams in his mind. With this children, we come to the end of the explanation as well as the various poetic devices used in this poem. Hope you all have understood it. Thank you.